Well, let me tell you, I, I was so excited when I heard that um, the magazine wanted to put us in a cover together. And uh, I said, wow, really? I'm like, me with D. Lea Salonga? And then uh, the question was, was it okay with me? And I was like, shouldn't it be the other way around? Is it okay with her? <laughs> because... Oh my God. We've known each other since we were teenagers. As in, we were in an acting workshop together when she was 17 and I was 15. Leia and I have been working since we were teenagers. We were both signed up in Viva Films at one time. We both attended the same acting workshops together. We have performed and sung together on television. So I have seen her throughout much of both of our careers and we're both now women in our 40s she looks glorious you know Tony Award here and all of these things you know so I, I think I think it's a great privilege and honor that um, I can be side by side with the Miss Leia Salonga much more she has grown into herself as a person and as a mom as a wife all of these things and she seems very complete and incredibly happy and she glows from the inside out. I've always had a high, high admiration for her. For me to see that and to see her and how ebullient she is at the shoot and how excited she is about life, it's like, yeah, she's living a good life and I am very, very happy for her that she is. Uh, I have stopped counting, but I started in 1986. So, what kept you going after all this time? Um, my love for my work. Um, when I entered show business, it wasn't because I had wanted to become an actress. I did it out of um, just a job opportunity, you know, to earn money. But then I eventually um, enjoyed what I was doing and ended up loving it. But you took off for a few years. Yes. And it was your when I got married. Yeah. So, so what, what prompted that decision? Well, I had already been working several years from 1986, about 10 years, 11 years. I got married in 19, uh, 1997 and I just wanted already to, uh, to have a change of pace. Uh, I was working so hard and I decided that since I was getting married, it would be good to settle down peacefully and just concentrate on, um, on marriage and being a wife, learning about how to really do that properly. So what did you learn about yourself in that period? Well, um, that I had other dreams, that I had other aspirations and I was able to dabble in in, my, in the other side of my creativity, not necessarily in front of the camera anymore. So I was able to get into my, my arts and crafts, uh, learn how to cook. The things that I had been wanting to do and learn, which I didn't have time for when I was younger and very busy in um, doing TV and film work. It was 37 years in the first week of March. So yeah, I've been at this for a little over 37 years now. Wow. Yeah. Blasphemy. That's a long time. <laughs> okay, so um, what has kept you going all this time? So you started really young. So. Yeah, like how not to get burned out by the time you're 20, right? Exactly. Um, I don't know. I think I just sincerely like what I do. Not like. I sincerely love what I do. Um, and I like getting better at it. I like thinking, oh, there's still more I can do with my voice or, or, or to be in a gig and discover, oh, it can actually do that. Then 
and then keep pushing. So that's that's I think it's just the constant stepping forward and moving forward and finding ways to improve. I think that's what that's one of the things that keeps me going. And it's just it's fun. It's just fun. That's that's good to hear after like it's still a lot. I know, like it's still a lot of fun. I still derive a lot of enjoyment out of it. It still gives me a high. Um, the high that you get from a combination of terror, anticipation, excitement, nervousness, and then there's just this. And once you get out there and you're, you have a rapport with the audience and you experience that, it's just that exhilaration at the end of it. It's. It's a lot of things. <laughs> it's a lot of things and it's fun. I guess what I like best about my job is is the appreciation that I receive from my audience. Um, when you receive um, praise, when you receive um, compliments, no, that's what keeps me going. It inspires me. On the others end of the spectrum, what was what's the worst part? Well, the worst part, the usual, because in our line of work, it's, it can be very hard physically and, um, and it's very time consuming. So the challenge is always how to strike a balance. After all, I'm married, I have children now, and, and I'm always trying to strike a balance with you know, time management, because that's very important. When I get to travel to places I've never seen before, I mean, I got to travel to Eastern Europe for the first time last year, thanks to Ildivo. Um, I, the first time I ever went to Serbia and Croatia and um, Slovakia and Slovenia, wow. all of these beautiful, picturesque, almost fairy tale like places. I mean, the best beef carpaccio I've ever had, and also there's also the food, was in Zagreb. And I think one of the best olive oils I've ever had also came from Croatia. Um, in Croatia. It's in Croatia. And, and I went to Prague for the first time. And I was taken care of by the Philippine Embassy. I mean, they, they sent a guide from the Philippine Embassy to take us around. And, and I was like, oh, you guys, this is amazing. And then there's actually a Filipino store in the middle of Prague. And it's in, in, the, in the middle of Prague, near one of the across the street from one of the churches. And it's like, Incredible and un unbelievable food, unbelievable uh, sights to see the castles, the cathedrals, and just walking around the streets. It's like this. This cannot be real. It's one of the most pretty places I have ever been, and I would highly recommend people going. And it's really not that expensive to go, and the hotels are really not that expensive either. And it, it's it's when you move into more the more western part of Europe. That's when every, the prices jack up. But right now, Eastern Europe's pretty cheap. So it's like, go. It's, it's safe. It's very safe. And English is what more widely spoken than we expect it to be. You go to places like, when I went to, when I went to Belgrade, I'm like, I was really surprised at how much English was spoken. And um, the salesman at like the Apple Store equivalent was fluent English. And, and here's the thing also about Serbia, everybody looks like a movie star, and you understand why, Djoko, why Novak Djokovic looks like his, like looks like that. Yeah. Or Anna Ivanovic, it's like they're all beautiful. It's like, wait, you're a salesman at the Apple store and you look like a supermodel? It's like, what? And it, it's, it's normal everywhere. That's the best part, so what's the worst part? The worst part? What's the worst part about my job? Um. Performing is great, camaraderie is great. I think it's when I shoot a movie and we we stay up so late that you, you're so exhausted you can't even think straight. I think any time that it gets to that point, when, when your body is really, really so, so, so tired and under any of those circumstances. I mean, we'll be doing th a theater thing, we'll be in tech, and we'll be in costumes, high heels, wigs, whatever, for like 12 hours straight. We'll, there will be moments like that. And I mean, you, you try to do your best to keep from losing your cool, from losing your mind. And if you're the leading lady or the leading man of a show, you have a responsibility to keep it together for the sake of everyone else. Because 
if you lose it, then it gives somebody else permission to lose it also. So I try to keep everything light. I try to keep things happy, you know, as much as as much as possible. Um, but yeah, I think when you're physically exhausted, that's probably the worst. The worst. Or when you get vocally exhausted, that's probably the worst part because then you're, there's also the panic. And if you're vocally exhausted and you have a performance that night, it kind of messes with your mind. Can I do this? Will I be able to do this? Will I be able to produce sound? So there's, there's, there's a lot of that. My families. Just really, my, my family and my friends. Aside from my own opinion, <laughs> I guess, I guess it would be my husband's also. His opinion also matters to me. I often ask him his opinion of certain things when I'm not sure. And uh, while I may not agree, we don't always agree, but it's, his inputs are good enough to consider. My children, you know, spending time with them, watching them grow, you know, seeing the changes. I feel like, you know, they're growing so fast, so I have to, I really have to keep an eye already on them. At the same time, I'm also busy keeping myself productive, but they are my happiness. They, my husband, our family, that's really what keeps me happy. I think when I'm with hanging out with my family, when I'm with my daughter, because she's just the, one of the most fun human beings ever. She's just funny. She's a little crazy. She's goofy as all heck, and and just smart and bubbly and adventurous and very different from me. And it's really nice to to see the world through her eyes. When I'm hanging out with my husband, we actually like each other. We don't just love each other as man and wife, but we're friends. We're Friends, it's nice to be able to say you're friends with the guy you married, um, and it's fun. We make each other laugh, so yeah, he's really cool. Um, when I'm with my friends, when I'm watching a Broadway show or watching a, a friend in concert doing what they do really, really well, um, when I watch a good movie, when I eat good food. Yeah, I mean my job, what I do when I get up to sing and when I do a musical, it's fun. That's yes, I have to enjoy it and I do. But just living a good life is fun. That makes me happy. So I think everything, everything feeds into everything else. And that for me creates a good life. Creates a very happy life. Good I was a biology student in Ateneo. I was in pre-med. It was like my first year of, of college. And, and I wasn't terrible at it, and I was actually really enjoying my classes. And then I auditioned for this musical, and then it just, it just kept on going. And all of my friends in school were like, you have to do this. You have to take this opportunity because these things are all, these are, this is a once in a lifetime thing. You cannot, you'd be crazy to not take a chance at this. And I'm grateful that, that my friends were so encouraging and at, at pushing me to do this.